So the classic example of looking at hydraulics is the idea that if we wanted to lift a car, um, what are the forces that would go into that as well as how can we use hydraulics as uh, a benefit to us? So if we think about a situation where we have a hydraulic setup and on one side we have a car. So we have a car sitting on this side. And on the other side, we have a press where someone can input force. Um, how can this be at, used as a benefit? And, and our goal is we're, we're going to try to lift this car a set distance. So we want to lift this a distance D. How could we uh, input a force here? Um, to actually allow us to lift this car instead of actually having to lift the entire weight of the car. So let, let's give this scenario a few information. So we'll give the mass of the car as 16,000, or excuse me, 1,600 kilograms. Uh, we'll say that the area, and we'll call this position A here, we'll call this position B here. And again, we'll say that there is a incompressible fluid that is connected between the two positions. The area at A is going to be equal to 4 meters squared. And we'll say that the area at B will be half of that, so that will be 2 meters squared. Now, if we look at this, um, the first thing that we're going to look at A is uh, how big of a force is needed at B to lift the car. So how we would look at that is we would say uh, Pascal's principle tells us that the pressure at A is going to be equal to the pressure at B. So first, if we can understand, well, what is the pressure at A? So the pressure at A is going to be equal to the force over the area. Uh, the force at A is going to be the force of gravity acting on the car over the area. So that is the mass of the car times gravity over the area, which in this case is 1,600 times 10 over 4. And so that's going to give me a pressure that is equal to uh, 4,000 newtons per meter squared. So how can I use that then in figuring out what my force is at B? So because of Pascal's principle, if the pressure at A is equal to the pressure at B, uh, then I could say that the uh, force of B over the area of B is going to also equal 4,000 newtons per meter squared. Uh, if I then convert that and solve for force, that's going to be equal to the pressure at B times the area, which is simply 4,000 times 2. So I see that the force that I would need to lift the car has gone uh, to 8,000 newtons, which the force of gravity itself of the car is 16,000 newtons. So I've essentially decreased my force needed to lift the car by half by using this hydraulic system, which is a great, that's a great benefit. I have to apply less force. The other problem that we can look at is uh, how far Would I need to push at position B to lift the car that 0.5 meters at A? Now, if we think about this, uh, basically what we would be doing here is we would be applying a force over a set distance at B. And in doing so, we'd be applying a force upwards at A, and again, moving it a certain distance. And so if we remember, 
when we apply a force over a certain distance, that's going to be equal to work. And that's the concept we're going to use in this to make sure we understand how we could then find the distance I would need to be applying that force for at B. And what's going to uh, mean is that the work that I put in, or the work that I do at B, so this is my input, this is my output, uh, the work that I put in at position B is going to have to be equal to the amount of work that I get out at position A. Uh, remember that work has that relationship to energy. I can't put any more energy in than I get out. I can't get out any extra energy than what I put in. So the work input is going to be equal to the work output. Uh, what I would say then that that is force times distance at B is going to be equal to the force at A times the distance at A. And if I were to solve that then for uh, the distance at B, that would be then equal to the force at A times the distance at A over the force at B. which that would give me 16,000 times 0.5 over uh, the force that I have to apply at B, which we said was 8,000. And all of that then would give me that the distance that I would have to apply to this distance at B would be uh, one meter. So. While I would have to apply uh, that force for a longer distance, while I'd have to push for one meter when I'd only be getting a half meter out at position uh, A, I would have to do less, uh, apply a smaller force, which makes it seem like it's easier. Oh, you can't see that down here, sorry. The distance would be one meter uh, if I were to solve that out.